Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, October 10th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Uh, this is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. That's ddarko2012. Okay, so I don't know how this broadcast is going to be. It's the first one um, since the last one, which is about a half a month ago, maybe three weeks now almost. Uh, but either way, I'm still trying to figure out uh, some of these technical um, little bugs and issues, uh, you know, after switching from Windows, which, uh, you know, for, for all it's worth, I was able to make videos with Windows. And with Linux, uh, now switching over to Linux, I've had um, a lot of problems. And the thing is, I don't want to use their editing software because I think it's just not user-friendly. I'm not that tech-savvy, so... Um, either way, just bear with me, and I'm going to try to use my old Screencast-O-Matic um, program from their website, uh, but I just have to try to work through it. So I may not be able to edit it, and I don't know how good it's going to be, but either way, um, I'm just going to go ahead and just move forward here. Um, I have a, a, a poll up here, a new poll. Do you believe the Occupy Wall Street protests will succeed in convincing government and Wall Street officials to uh, meet the people's demands? So far, 66% say no, and 33% uh, say maybe. So you go in there, and you, got, you can check out this website. Uh, just get moving here. And um, just a quick disclaimer for people, uh, new listeners, I'm just – mostly speaking to my audience who's been kind of waiting on edge for me to come back for three weeks um all these articles i've just had to sit down literally a hundred and probably a hundred to maybe at least over a hundred times i will say at least over a hundred times i've uh, sat here and gotten ready and prepared with all my articles and tabs open and get ready to record and then just nothing just nothing you know what I mean? Like it doesn't work. I either you can't hear me, and you got video, you got video, and you don't have me. But either way, uh, these articles, it's just like <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> There's a lot of news going on, and I've I've compiled them the past three weeks, and I've had to dump them. So it's just very very aggravating. Okay, so maybe it's going to take a few videos for me to get back into this. Okay, I'm done blabbing. Nestle Chief uh, warns of new food riots, and it says here the head of the world's biggest food company, uh, Nestle, said on Friday that rising food prices have created conditions similar to 2008 when hunger riots took place in many countries. And we're going to move on to here. The world is facing worst financial crisis in history, Bank of England governor says. says the world is facing the worst financial crisis uh, at least since the 1930s, if not ever, the governor of Bank of England said last night. Of course, it wasn't last night for any of us, but maybe about three or four days ago. It says here, average duration of unemployment rises to new all-time high, and it said here that, uh, as noted previously, one key fly in the ointment in the otherwise better-than-expected jobs report uh, was the manufacturing jobs data, which declined thir by 13,000. It says perhaps at the end of the day, this is the most important job data point, since while declining government jobs at the end of the day is a good thing, government workers didn't actually create anything of value for the economy. That's right, you know. Oh, build a bridge. Well, okay, that's great. It says here, uh, and that's what they're trying to do, though, you know, and that's to stimulate uh, the uh, stimulation or to stimulate the economy is to spend money. Uh, it's actually borrowing money on interest from the Federal Reserve banks and central banks, and then they build these bridges that really didn't need to be built. And in North Carolina, I think it was one of their uh, main representatives, either their governor or their senator, one of the representatives said, you know what, uh, federal government, just leave us alone. Shut up with your bridges. Our bridges are okay. They're not going to fall down. And uh, but they do push that because the federal government is all about the, what the Federal Reserve, and uh, that's kind of like their little proxy, their go between, um, their little uh, uh, dealer or, or whatever you want to call it, liaison between uh, the banks that want to rape people and steal money with interest, and then you got certain people in the federal government that well, it becomes it's it seems like it's more and more now that uh, that these quote representatives. Are representing more, more of these corporations and the Federal Reserve System, which are basically Chase, you know, all those uh, private banks, banking institutions, and not so much the people. So you're kind of at a loss right there. I mean, anything that they do, they're going to be working against you. So 
uh, either way, we're going to move on here. How uh, almost half of the U.S. population lives in households that receive state benefits. 46% of, of households pay no federal income tax. 34% of the population receives food stamps, subsidized housing, and Medicaid. And Obama touted $447 billion jobs bill on Thursday that would extend jobless benefits. And I think it came out to like, what was it, like uh, 20 million or 20,000, some ridiculous number. Like it was like $100,000 per job that was created. So, yeah, again, not not very efficient. Uh, moving on here, we have hunger crisis grips North Korea's food runs short. I've covered this before, um, but very briefly, um, and you had Kim Jong-il visiting Russia uh, a little while back, maybe a month back, and uh, visiting neighboring countries, and uh, they're hurting pretty bad as far as food goes. Uh, and you can go in there and check that out, but it basically says that uh, it's getting late for North Korea to get massive amounts of food aid it claims to need before the harsh winter sets in. Said the country's, quote, dysfunctional food distribution system. Um, of course, they're, uh, they're talking about pure communism, I guess. It says rising global uh, commodity prices and sanctions imposed over Pyongyang's nuclear and missile programs, so see, have contributed. So see, it's sanctions, right? It's sanctions, just like in Libya. Um, where they're saying, oh, the hospitals are not working and, and everything's down. And there's, there's uh, you know, uh, the, these rebel terrorists, I call them terrorists, these rebels or freedom fighters are really fighting to enslave the rest of the Libyan people that don't want to be enslaved. And um, so, yeah, they slap sanctions on them and then they complain about why life is so bad. And like in uh, Iraq where there's, uh, you know, right after they didn't have water, running water and uh, they're... Um, uh, electricity for a long time, whereas before they had it under their big, bad, brutal dictators. So um, just, you know, like I said before, uh, World War II was an experiment, uh, and it was a good uh, wage for the powers that be, mostly the bankers and the Rothschild families and all their little factions to, uh, to uh, basically experiment with political and economic systems, you know, fascism, and then you had democracy, capitalism, you have communism, communism. Um, which basically didn't have any uh, competition. So what we have now is a hybrid between two of them, uh, Capicom, whatever. It's capitalism and communism mixed together. And uh, so these guys are trying to survive uh, uh, basically kind of like in that old uh, Russian uh, type. And that they do. They do have like a little iron curtain around themselves. So a lot of the people don't actually get a lot of the propaganda that uh, that uh, other countries do, you know, and that's that's pretty that's a uh, it's not scary. I don't want to try to scare you, but it's just it just goes to show you how how effective of a tool um, the media is in uh, getting people to do things that they wouldn't normally do, like uprisings. Um, from a completely different country. So you have the Pentagon, the CIA, and the NSA, all of these, uh, but mostly they're just the tools, the, the actual roundtables, the CFR and all them, Trilateral Commission, and uh, and uh, what's another one? They have the Bilderberg Group, and they have the Rand Corporation. Those are the actual brains behind all of it. And then they use the intelligence uh, apparatuses that are funded uh, by stolen money uh, from citizens. And then they, uh, they can actually create... A regime they call it see in, in your country uh, in your country they'll call it an administration but it then when you want to take somebody out the quote the enemy us versus them you got to call them the regime right so in Libya and other places in Iran they're going to call the Obama not the administration the regime but basically my point is is that uh, you could have you could have this happen where where uh, people are taken out uh, leaders are toppled and it's, it has nothing really to do with the people in that country uprising. It has everything to do with um, um, groups with invested interests like stealing their oil or their, or, or their aqueducts or their mineral rights like, like in Afghanistan or, um, or Iraq or now Libya. Um, it, it's just like I said, it is kind of scary that that can happen. Anyways, I know I'm pontificating here, but uh, I'm just trying to get back into the mode, and that's why I said to bear with me here. I'm going kind of slow with these articles, and because I'm not even sure when I pause it there if I'm going to be able to record again. So, <laughs> Georgia may use prisoners to fill farm labor gap. I've covered this before as well, but I want to make sure that this is out there, that you guys are seeing this come up more and more about using prisoners as labor. And uh, basically says state officials have set their sights on another potential pool of workers to help bridge Georgia's severe farm labor gap. Then you, of course, have prisoners. And um, I'm 
pretty sure at one time it used to be locals and then of course they hired in cheap labor from Mexico and uh, they usually do that so it's like okay so now they have to hire prisoners Okay, something's weird there. Anyways, uh, Federal Reserve wants to monitor Facebook and Twitter. Says the Fed of New York is recognizing social media's potential to shape public opinion. To shape public opinion and request uh, monitoring and analysis of Facebook and Twitter conversations. The request uh, for a proposal for a sentiment analysis and social media monitoring solution aims to identify online conversations by the public, bloggers, and other influences for the department's communication group. And you know, these guys are Nazis. We all know that. I don't want to say Nazis because it's actually an understatement, right? Uh, they're worse than Nazis, and they're up there with just the with the devil not even like a physical person but just the devil as you would think of it right and so you can't even go around these complexes uh you'll have guards and you'll have guys come out like in that one person they, i think he was going to do a sit or what was it a day of rage or something like that and this guy and it was just a regular dude and he walked with his baby in a stroller around the fed and uh they actually showed up there was actually guards in line every 10 yards around the com uh, you know armed and all that and like you know militarized type police guards and uh they were just sitting there and said oh yeah we had a call about something you know they had a call about someone trying to organize some kind of protests around the fed so you see they take that shit very seriously and they'd rather have people protesting against wall street because like i said i was going to cover this i don't think you can you're going to accomplish much by protesting against wall street um because wall street is basically uh, is an arm of the government of the, of the, of the larger corporation and, and unless you end the government you're not going to do anything to affect wall street you can get out of wall street you can pull your stocks your investments you can try to deal in your own currency and metals and trade and barter and just get the fuck away from that whole system of funny money digital fiat currency but uh yeah i mean the best thing to do is is actually to end the fed i mean you can sound like ron paul like we gotta end the fed you know but then again he's a representative of the state so i don't know how long i mean how long has he been saying that for about almost 20 something years and what's happened he can't even audit the fed um so we're gonna move on here and uh, U.S. consumer confidence hits new low. So as American politicians continue to battle over ways to boost the economy and create jobs, confidence among U.S. consumers has stagnated in September, nearing a two-year low. And it has nothing to do with confidence. It has to do with uh, the money in your wallet. If you don't have any money in your wallet, you're not going to be too freaking confident, right? But that's how these uh, little analysis, these little quote experts like to put it right it says here obama's millionaire tax collected over the next two years 10 years will plug four months worth of deficit you can go in there and check that out on time unions uh students join wall street protesters and there's something going on with the unions uh it's, I, i've heard of that like there's, all, there's gonna be all kinds of conspiracy theories and uh theories going on with this occupy wall street you know and I'll be able to get into that a little bit more later and maybe in the next couple of days if I am able to record successfully and upload. Oh, please, God. <laughs> I still, uh, I'm still not thinking that this is going to be up and running. So either way, you, um, yeah, so there's something with the unions. Um, anyways, um, and also um, um, uh, I just want to put this out there about uh, the whole Wall Street thing. It seems to me that it's, that it's about that this is going to be co-opted guys you got to be careful because it seems like this is going to turn into anti-democracy which we've never really had and an anti-capitalism so i mean a lot of these people i know they're venting and they don't have jobs you know and they lost their jobs i lost mine two years ago um and you know it's a hard place to find it's a hard time to find work but with that being said you go out there and protest that's good that's great get your voice heard it's nice to know that there's people out there doing things the, my question is is what is the goal because not what well, not every person is going to have different goals and you don't have to be unified the only thing that you should be unified i think personally this is my philosophy is in freedom and the way to do that is by uh, volunteerism and non-coercion non-force which means you can't use the state to uh to to uh meet your goal okay i'll cover that later china u.s currency bill would have repercussions yeah like world war three warning corporate fascist military coup brewing in the united states this of course has to do with um general petraeus he seems to be the guy that's going to uh swoop in at the last second and take the presidency why because i said the first female president will be president and i said it would be sarah palin but now she's not going to run that's kind of interesting because people didn't buy it 
which means they're going to get desperate, which means they're going to get a military dictator like Petraea. And then you got Bachman. She could be another potential. Argentine water in demand amid gold. And uh, I was talk talking about the Falklands. Now, this is another article. I don't have time. Nestle designs TV ad to appeal to dogs directly. Then Boeing drug bus shows alarming spread of prescription pill epidemic. Entrepreneurs scramble to create best bug. Thank you.